What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to day 90. Did I put that right set up? I sure did. Day 90 of Fusion. Man, we are on the final stretch. This has been what a ride. Um, sorry for not getting these videos out earlier. A um, couple things. Um, just life got busy. Also, I never actually used these videos for my classroom, which is um, crazy. Uh, just in the situation we're in, I started this video series. I want to finish it through, but um, with where life it goes at is that I actually started at a different school, and we didn't use this package. We used something else, and if you've been following this channel, that was on shape, which is tons of fun. Both packages have their perks and their benefits and their back and forth. It's just for us, I had to use on shape, and that's the direction we went with. So let's make a U joint with. Fusion. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to kind of talk through and, and work through this piece. It might be a little fast. I might do things not perfectly because uh, I found out I've kind of unintentionally picked up like shortcuts from one system that aren't the same on the other. And in any case, uh, we will keep moving forward. Speaking of which, is that intro video just too cool or what? I spent way too long making a 15 second intro clip, uh, but I just think it's fun. In any case, let's build a U-joint. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with the shaft or the bottom base for my U-joint. And I'm just gonna take a one inch circle, bring it up. Let's just say, I think, let's say one and a half inches. That looks okay. And then we're going to build upon this and make our fork for our U-joint. So we'll click on rectangle. I do really like the center point rectangle. It is just the bomb.com. Thank you, Corey Zam, for that small little tidbit. I mean, it's, there's a couple things he said when they first teaching me how to do 3D modeling systems and Huge shout out to Corey. If you haven't seen his videos, he is a wonderful instructor. Go to his channel. I'll try to maybe, yeah, you can find Corey Zan, wonderful teacher. He's just doing this thing a whole lot longer than I have. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and just bring up a U joint. Actually, let's go back and let's edit this sketch. Because what I'm gonna do is I am going to not bring up the whole thing. Actually, yeah, let's finish it first. Let's add some thickness to it. Let's bring it up a quarter inch. And then let's bring up our forks. So let's do another sketch on top of that. Let's do a rectangle here. And let's do another rectangle here. Let's go a little bit thicker, though. So let's... Trim that line. Do rectangle from here to here. Hit finish sketch. Extrude both of these up. Let's go for two inches. That looks okay. All right, so we got our um, our fork here for our U joint. That base looks a little big, and so I'm actually going to go back in here. And I'm going to dimension this sketch to be probably 2.5 inches rather than 3. And is that going to change anything else? Yeah, let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and dimension this. This to this. Let's make it 0 0.25. Just because I made this earlier and I made it a little too wide. Uh, the problem I found out is that the fork just, the inner, they overlap with each other and didn't work too well. But we're going to see what kind of mess we get into here. Just to make it look prettier, I'm going to go ahead and round off and fill it, not fillet, these four edges up top. And just to make it bring to a nice, easy point. And we're looking good. 
we've made our first fork. So since I'm there in our first fork, I'm going to go ahead and take our body here. I'm going to right click and we're going to make a component out of it. So we'll just call this fork. You can kind of call it whatever you want. I've got a student who likes to make the weirdest annotations possible. Uh, the most recent thing of her that she's made is she called her last design dwarf chimes. I think before that it was something about an octopus. In any case, you should probably practice better known uh, naming processes than I have. But we're going to stick with fork for now. Now we're going to cut our hole out. Let's go ahead and go all the way through. Click on cut. And we were almost there, folks. Five, and, five minutes, 30 seconds in, and we are almost halfway done. But we're just going to copy and paste the rest, and we're going to kind of finish from there. But let's do it. Let's create a sketch again here. So we've already cut our hole out. What we're going to do now is we're going to do another circle. And finish sketch. We're going to extrude this one through, but instead of, well, is that flush on the other side? No, it's not. There we go. Instead of a join operation, though, we're going to do a new component. And so what this should do for me is we should have two components here. We've got the fork. We've now got component two. Let's just call this connector. In fact, stop today. There we go. Connect. All right. What can we do next? Well, I'm going to right click on this. I'm going to click move copy. And what this allows me to do is it allows me to move this piece. However, um, what we're going to do is we're going to make a copy of this piece as we move it. So we we'll click on create a copy and we can kind of rotate it however we want. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to align this piece to where it is overlapped with the center of this rod. Now, we have that rod being, uh, I believe, an inch and a half. And so I'm going to kind of eyeball from here. I think I'm going to have to do negative 1.25. We did not mean to hit enter there. So, yeah. Okay. And I think that was good. I think I have to move over just a hair. You know what? Let's do this. If we're going to do this, might as well do it right. I'm going to take it, move copy again. We're going to take this body. We're going to translate it. There we go. Let's rotate it. Ah, better answer. Let's rotate it about the center axis here. So I'm going to zoom out so I can select on that center axis. Let's rotate it 90 degrees. And let's create a copy. Ah, there we go, folks. Looking great. Okay. Now what this has done for me is that this should be a separate body from this piece, which is okay. But what we're going to do then is we're going to combine our target body is going to be, but not that one. No, 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 no. Be selected. Get out of here. Get out of here. Target body is going to be the first connector that we made that already is a component. Our tool body is going to be the other part of the connector. It's going to be a join. Let's see how that does for me. So now if I take this and I make my connector invisible, both pieces disappear. Everything is looking good. All right, we are almost done, folks. We're just going to take this, and we're going to take our fork, and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to do move copy. We're going to create a copy. And let's... Uh, Let's try free move. Let's see if this works for us. So for our Z angle, let's try rotating at nine degrees. Hit enter again. 
Get out of here. There we go. Move copy. Components. Wait for orange to select the fork. Let's try create a copy. Let's do 90 degrees. Oh, not, that's the wrong axis. Let's do... Is that going to be the X? No, that's not it. Come on. But the X is going to be 180. There we go. And as far as pulling it up, I may be able to pull it up. I bolt there and snap into place. Almost. That's all right. I'll just leave it there for now. And we're going to throw in our joints and it should make everything work kind of nice and neat. All right. What else we got? Oh, we got the plates. So what we're going to do is I'm going to click on sketch. Because that something needs to be grounded for it to rotate on. So what I'm going to do is him it's... I'm just going to make a small little plate on the bottom of each of my forks. It doesn't have to be very big at all. It's just something that has to be grounded. Something has to not move in your assembly so that the, the rest of the joints and animations work correctly. So, that new component, we'll just call disk. You know, is disk spelled with a C or a K? Or does it matter? Or is it one of those things where it's English and the, the European spelling or the American and the English spelling? Or, I don't know. But in any case, I'm going to make a disk for both sides. New component. This is going to be disk 2. All right. Now, I believe we have all of our pieces here. We just need to assemble them correctly. So I'm going to click on Join. Actually, let's get out of there first. Disc 1, ground. Disc 2, ground. Those, well, actually, I'm going to unground that first. Let's start with the bottom of our assembly and then go up from there. So let's do Join. The center of... Our fork is going to rotate around the center of this disc. Oh, I did not select that second face correctly. Let's zoom in. There we go. And the tech motion is going to be a rubber loop. Boom. Looks great. We're going to do another rubber loop. So the center of this face is going to rotate around the center of this face. Looks good. It's not going to go the full way, which is okay, because uh, it's going to be limited by the other half of the fork. So you can, if you want to, here, put your, your rests and your maximum, your mins, and kind of things like that, but the rest of it's going to be put in as expected. I say that now, and then something's going to go wrong. Remember, this and this is a preview, right? It's, it's not thinking about the rest of it, but hey, look at that. Things are looking good. And our last joint is going to be that the other fork is going to spin on the other disc. Click OK. And everything is looking good. Let's go ahead and ground our disc 2. So let's, let's put it on the ground. And, okay. Now what should happen is that I should be able to rotate this and it should spin as expected. But that's not really a U joint. We just made a fancy useless axle. So how do we uh, kind of move things around? So I'm going to unground this second disc, and I'm actually going to move it to a different position. And you can kind of move it wherever you want, and then reground it, capture position, and then if we animate our model, we just made a U joint. <laughs> Universal joint looks great. Oh, man, Fusion is fun. Uh, at some point, I might actually 3D print these and just have them like up on the wall where students can kind of spin them with their hands and just see it in action. Uh, with that, I might have to make some small adjustments here. That way, you know, pieces don't fall out. But in any case, we have made a U-joint. This is day 90. 
we're going to wrap up the last 10 days doing something fun. Uh, I've got some, I think I'm just going to have fun with these last 10 days. Uh, you're welcome to reach out. If these videos have been helpful, please, by all means, like and subscribe uh, and kind of reach out, shout out if you'd like some more specific content. You guys are awesome. Stay awesome. And I will see you guys on the last 10 videos for this series. We are starting something new once we get this finished. Uh, and I don't know if you can see it. Can you see it kind of all the way over there? That is a roll of filament, folks. We're going to start some 3D printing videos on taking this kind of the skills that we've taken from learning it. Now we're going to do it, as in you've been creating these things with us. And now we're going to make it. The third part of the channel is going to start to be in full effect. We're going to buy some 3D printers. We're going to start making some 3D printing videos. That way, the regular person at home can start 3D printing at home and not be overwhelmed like I was for way too long. Like I said, you guys are awesome. And I'll see you guys next week.